So this video is going to be um, pretty well to the point. I'm going to try to waste as little time as possible because this one issue is critical and it, it really needs to be resolved. I'm going to avoid going into a lot of depth. I'm just going to go straight to the point. So here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, 1.10. It says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Okay, because see, then this is another thing. People always want to say, well, who are you to judge? I'm not a judge. God is the judge. All I'm doing is comprehending the judgment. So for all of the people that want to say um, the, the lifestyles that are the opposite of the standard that God has sent, uh, who, when they say, well, who are you to judge those lifestyles? Well, who are they to judge? Who are they to judge that it's okay to engage in the things that God has explicitly told us to avoid? Right, And so here we are wondering why the church is not as effective at impacting the culture as they should be. And we see that the church is splintered and fractured all over the place. We've got so many churches in this country that are sitting at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% capacity right down the street or a few miles away from another church in the same situation, but both churches paying 100% of their bills wondering why they can't reach the culture. And you've got people that are worried about, well, if I let, if I try to combine it, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to pay our bills and this and that? Have faith in God to make it happen. And folks, look, I understand that right now at, at, at this point, in history, you're not going to have a lot of Pentecostal churches linking up with Baptist churches. I get that. You're not going to have Episcopalian churches lining up with um, Church Christ. It's it's there's there's some disconnect there. There's some things that need to be resolved. We can address that later after we do what we need to do to amplify the outreach. Okay, So if the churches will get with like-minded congregations and come together, then communities can fund liaisons on the church's behalf. They can establish a fund to make it where every single community of any size at all in this country has a world-class Christian education available to the students, okay? The public school is, is fundamentally disrupted, okay? I, I am a school teacher. The school that I taught at was recognized as one of the best public schools in the United States, and our administration was cheering and super excited about the fact that we were like four points above the state average for proficiency, but we were still below 50% of our student body population in their ability to be academically proficient, okay? And my theory on that is that people are, they do not have proper relation with the foundation of reality that God has provided, and so they're all over the place. They're trying to balance. Some people don't even have a foot on the foundation of reality. They're just tethered to it with a string. That's how a good person can be a good person and not be a Christian. It's because that common thread of energy that Christ has blazed through the reality of this realm, which is the realm of time, the, the realm where there's a beginning of and an end, he's blazed through. He said that everybody can see the light. Some people don't want to recognize it. They want to try to run away from it, but they can't get away from it. That thread of this is what is good, this is the standard of reality, says God. That's there for every one of us to see, but whenever we don't come together and amplify our energies then we're, we're, we're just in a sea of people and it, it, it's watered down like if you put, uh, you know, you got a, a, a glass of Kool-Aid, you pour that into a bucket of water, the Kool-Aid disappears. That's kind of how it is with, with our energy, the energy of our unity in Christ. That's what it is. That's what, that's the power. Okay. And we're, hey, look, we've all been manipulated from one degree to another. Okay. But God's grace is going to be like, okay, look, I, I, God's grace gets us. Okay. It understands that we've been manipulated primarily through our avenues of entertainment. Okay. And he's patient. He's a loving God. He realizes they're going to have to work through some stuff at this point because a lot of damage has been done. But hey, look, that doesn't change God's word. We have changed. Collectively, humanity has shifted further away. There's fewer people that are truly grounded on the foundation of reality than what there used to be. However, if we can get to the young people, 
with the truth, the historical truth. The scientific truth. There's a lot of people out there who don't even know what creation science is. Okay, A lot of people that know about evolutionary theory and think dinosaurs are millions and millions of years old. But folks, they found soft tissue still intact on dinosaurs. There is no way soft tissue would still be intact if dinosaurs were millions and millions of years old. Okay, But anyway, forget all that. Let's look at this, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to jump down people's throat. I don't want any pastors to be like, "Well, who is this guy telling me what to be?" Look, I'm just a dude, okay? And but I, but I've looked at it. God has reached out to me, and he 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 lit a fire under me, and he said, "Hey, go and look, go and look for yourself." And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm just a a refined hillbilly, but I would de- I would debate anybody on this planet about the legitimacy of Jesus Christ and Christianity because the evidence is overwhelming. We can just talk about history. And that's one of the things that drove me crazy about Ken Ham and that debate he had with Bill Nye. They were talking about science, science, science. You got one dude standing on this side of the jug. You got one dude standing on this side. They ain't seeing eye to eye because they've got a giant jug. Not really a jug. They got a jug. This is just what I had handy, right? Okay. They've got a giant block of their vision. They can't see eye to eye. But all Ken Ham had to do was go get that hammer and that nail of historical fact because truth boils down to documented verified factual information that's what it is right but these young people today and for for decades okay these young people today are going to be the adults of tomorrow and the adults of today were the young people of past and they've had this distorted perception of history pumped into their minds Whether it's scientific history, whether it's the factual information in the historical record that verifies the legitimacy of Christianity or not, okay? People don't have perspective of that. And one of the reasons why is that the church is so divided over trivial things, okay? If the church will come together and unify their ability to to impact the culture, then they're going to be able to build their own schools, and then they will be able to contend for state funding on top of it because the taxpayers shouldn't be having to pay for a Christian education for their kids and have to pay to keep the public school going when the public school is not handling its business as effective as it should. So I'm going to have to get off here because I I got kids that are kind of going crazy in the background. I got to figure out what that's all about. But hey... Think about what I said. Talk to other people about it. We can, we will win this. God wins no matter what. Even if in this time the United States doesn't succeed in what we're trying to do, and I have faith that we're going to, hey, if, if Biden becomes president, everything changes but God, right? We're still going to be good no matter what. We may have hard times, but hey, this, this realm of time is so short compared to the eternal. God bless.